hi guys welcome back today in this tutorial we are going to see how the BSP works so BSP is basically the boat support package from Nordic SDK this package is uh, really useful if you are using some LEDs for indicating some states or you are using some buttons and uh, you need the interrupts to handle them so it's very useful so let's see how we can uh, uh, we can program the bsp package and how we can uh, use its feature for our projects so let's get started so let's create a new project so go into my pc and uh, go into the c directory here we have nrf sdk and uh, in nrf sdk go into the examples and uh, go into the peripherals from the peripherals we are going to copy the template project and then paste it in my projects so we are going to build our PSP from this template project so why I'm using this template project uh, the answer is simple the uh, template project has uh, everything or most of the files so it's really easy to work with the template project so I'm just going to open this go into the PC 10040 blank SES and open the EM project file so let's remove this and uh, we need to remove some extra files so I'm just going to delete them okay uh, we have removed most of the files let me zoom in a little so you can see it easily and uh, the next thing we are going to do is we need to add the logging file because this time I want to uh, use the logger uh, with our BSP package so it's really useful you are going to see how everything is working around and the BSP package is uh, uh, already configured for the low power uh, so if you are using some project with the low power in mind so you can easily integrate this BSP package into your project so let's get started so first of all we need to add some logging files so right click on this and add existing file just go into the NRF SDK and go into the components and uh, then go into libraries the and uh, we are going to go here in the log and uh, in the source uh, folder we have these files select them all click open uh, so do you want to duplicate these files because they were already here so I'm not just going to du duplicate them so click on the no no and it's done so right now we have uh, most of the files and uh, we are ready let's see if we have the boat support package yes we have it BSP is here and uh, now we need to configure some things in the SDK config so let's configure them go into the CMC's configuration wizard and we have to enable the logger and uh, there is the this time I'm, I'm I want to use a UART boat for logging data so I'm just going to add that uh, UART code as we have seen in the previous tutorial as well so let's copy that code uh, you, if you don't have that code just uh, watch my previous tutorial uh, or you can uh, get the file in the in the description of this video as well so so right now I will just open this NRF uh, SDK config file and I will press control plus F and then I'm just going to find nrf underscore log so here we can see this and I'm just going to make some space here and I'm just going to paste this here okay it's done control plus S to save now we are going to open this let's close this and open it in CMC's configuration wizard and here in the CMC's configuration wizard if we see it here you can see uh, it's telling that NRF uh, UART is added and uh, now it's uh, enabled so we have to set its priority the intro priority for the UART is 6 and uh, in the NRF logger 
if we go to deferred I'm just going to disable the deferred mode okay and uh, the next thing we need to change is go into the libraries and click on the app timer and here the IR priority put it to 7 and the configuration is done click on the save and close this file so right now SDK config.h file has been modified and uh, it's configured uh, now we are good to go with our project so really let's start so first of all I need to uh, include some of the files I'm just gonna paste them here first of all we need to initialize the clock for, because uh, the BSP is basically using the application timer uh, BSP provides many function like blinking LEDs or showing some states we will discuss them in a short time also the application timer is used for the debouncing as well because when we press the button an application timer starts uh, for some milliseconds and then it turns off it saves the debouncing of the button otherwise uh, sometimes we push the button and uh, the interrupt is generated for maybe more than one time maybe two times or three times because of the bumping of the button so to deal with that uh, situation and uh, normally we use some timer and uh, here in this case they are using application timers for that so right now I'm just going to initialize the clock so and here we will use the same uh, in the previous tutorial we used uh, application timers and uh, to use the application timers we need to initialize the clock so the low power clock needs to be initialized so I'm just going to start it and the second thing we need to do is uh, we are just going to tell that this clock should not generate any interrupts because uh, we will deal them ourselves so it's not going to generate any events and we are going to request it to generate no events okay the clock is configured now we can use the BSP package let's name it as So I'm going to initialize the both support package using BSP init function that we have previously seen but this time but this time I'm going to initialize the LEDs and buttons and also I'm going to pass an event handler uh, for handling the interrupt events uh, keep this in mind that uh, this uh, BSP package is using single channel so basically it's using the full port for NRF52832 devices we only have one port and uh, one port is connected with all of the 32 uh, pins uh, in uh, NRF52840 we have uh, more than one port we have port 0 uh, and port 1 so in NRF52840 we have two ports so the port event would be according to that but in this case it, it works similarly and uh, the uh, BSP package uh, this BSP init is just going to initialize LEDs buttons and uh, we are going to pass an interrupt handler uh, whenever we push a button so these buttons are now connected with an interrupt but this interrupt is working at a low power with a low clock frequency so even if the board is in sleep mode if the device uh, is in low power mode uh, these interrupts will still work but the high speed interrupts uh, which use which use 16 megahertz clock will not work in the low power mode because in low power mode high speed clock is turned off BSP init buttons and the last thing we are going to do is we are just going to pass it an interrupt handler so I haven't created any interrupt handler so let's create one so let's create one let's say we are going to use this event variable this is this is going to be passed once uh, an interrupt is generated so we use the switch statement for that for looking at which button was pressed so switch and uh, the event uh, would be our variable this time and this is basically a button and uh, now we need different cases for case for BSP event Q 
key zero. The key zero is basically the uh, button one. And similarly, we are going to create four cases for this the case two each case would be connected with a different key our uh, boat has four keys so from zero to three would be our keys and uh, the default statement and the default is nothing so we are going to do nothing in the default just return and that's it okay so we have uh, this switch event and uh, whenever a button is pressed we are going to check which button has been pressed and uh, according to the button we are uh, going to perform any operation so right now we have the BSP event handler so I'm just going to copy its name and paste it here okay event handler has been created so okay now we have to go into the main function and here in the main function we are just going to initialize the clock next we are going to initialize the timer and uh, now we need to initialize the log so to initialize the log let's use App error check and in this error check we are just going to pass the log in it and we are just going to pass it null value and we also have to initialize the backend and uh, now we will call the BSP we are just going to call this function to configure and initialize the pins from the buttons and LEDs okay so our code is done here so now I'm just going to use nrf log info and it's going to put some information so let's say we don't need to put uh, escape sequence here because the nrf logger uh, automatically places the escape sequence at the end of the line uh, we have a limited log buffer size so uh, be sure to flush it regularly the last thing we are going to do here is we are just going to use a simple function bsp board led on so it's going to turn on the LED let's say you want to turn LED 1 so just give right here 1 and it's going to turn on the LED and also let's print a sum of log message and I'm just going to turn off the LED and we press the uh, button 2 okay so we have used two of the functions the remaining two functions will be checked first of all let's see if it's working so I'm just going to save this all go to the build click on the build Oops, made some mistake. Spelling for the switch. Okay. So it's built and uh, make sure your device is connected. And I have also connected, uh, this time I have also connected a USB uh, for the UART port. And uh, there is a, a USB, a UART to USB converter. So basically it's a uh, sending data over U output so let's see I'm just going to connect and erase all and download okay once the code is downloaded uh, we need to connect with the serial terminal 
to see if it's working or not so I'm just going to open the putty for this and go into the serial and uh, let's see which let's see our devices where is our device connected right now so I'm just going to click right click on this PC go into the properties click on the device manager and here click on the com port and uh, here you can see the com port 11 is uh, connected with our device so right now I'm just going to type here com 11 and the baud rate for the communication is uh, 115200 and serial communication click on open and it's open I'm just going to click on the reset to see if it's working yes it's working see the application code started we can see this message here and uh, if I click the button 1 the LED is turned on if I click the button 1 again it's sending the message that LED is turned on and it's still turned on because we cannot see it's still turned on because uh, we haven't given it a uh, turn off function so if we click on the button 2 it's turning it off so right now we are using uh, so right now we are using uh, interrupts uh, with the low power uh, using the low power clock our buttons are working very uh, our buttons are working fine and uh, this is very useful let's see more features of the bsp package to there is another function we can use this as well uh, to use this function we need uh, an error code variable so let's say okay we have the error code variable so right now let's use that variable okay so we are going to use this function to uh, create some sort of indications so the both support package has already got some of the indications set for us uh, so let's see uh, what type of indications we have so if we so if you right click on this function uh, BSP indication set go to the definition and then again you are here uh, this function uh, here you cannot see it properly but uh, we have found something here this is the enumeration which is holding all the values so let's see uh, go to the definition and uh, here you can see this is the struct we have and uh, it has uh, a lot of uh, different indication types so these are all for LEDs so let's say I wanna indicate a fatal error if we click on the button 3 it's going to indicate the fatal error and let's say if we press the uh, button 4 it's going to indicate idle state so let's go in here and BSP indicate idle control plus has to save click on the build and it's built now click on the target connect to the target erase all and download once the code is downloaded we can see the application code is started so if we press the button 1 it's going to turn on the LED and uh, if we press the button 2 it's going to turn it off if we press the button 3 is indicating and uh, the state uh, the state name for this is indicate fatal error so this is a state of all of the LEDs and it's uh, showing a fatal error uh, but actually there is no error we are just using this uh, specific state for our purpose and uh, if we click on the button 4 let's see idle indicates uh, all of the LEDs are turned off it means it's idle right now and here is telling this but uh, you can see there is nothing being print here because we haven't put the NRF logger here let's put NRF logger control plus E okay so let's build the code connect erase all and download and here you can see it started so if I click on button 1 turned on turned on turned off and if I click here it's telling BSP indicate fatal error 
and BSP indicate idle. So you can see we are using the buttons and the loggers and we can see most of the stuff happening. So it's really useful. I hope so you have learned uh, a lot of stuff and the BSP package is really useful and you should uh, test it out. And everything is uh, already made for us in this library so we can just call these uh, library functions and use them for our purposes. I hope so you have learned something new today and uh, thank you very much for watching please uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the like button if you like this video and comment uh, below if you have any questions and uh, the code uh, for this uh, tutorial and uh, some of the cheat sheet in which i have explained some of the functions for the bsp uh, be sure to download that and the link is in the description below and uh, thank you very much for watching see you in the next video